I'm Pat Flansboy and I will talk about Scandinavian approaches to systems development. Some of you might not know who am I, so this is a background. I'm currently Vice Chancellor, Rector in Swedish, of Strömstad Academy. Strömstad Academy is a community for cross-scientific studies where most of us are retired. We have about 160 members. Three of them are laureate, have achieved Nobel Prize. We are about 70 full professors, 33 associated professors, docent in Swedish, and 30 lectors, assistant professors. So we are quite a qualified bunch of people. We cover 88 different areas, subjects, and have members from 14 countries. My area is information systems. You can look at my home page where a lot of my stuff is presented. I have worked at Lund University, Copenhagen Business School, Linné University and University West. I started working in 1972, so the 1st of January, so it is almost 50 years ago. Good heavens. It all started with this guy, Börje Langefors. He worked from 1949 at Saab Airplane Factory, calculating the strengths of Swedish warplanes, such as Draken, Lanz and Viggen, with the FAM method. He was one of the developers of that method. It requires a huge amount of other trivial calculations. So uh, Langefors approached the Mathematik Nemden, a Swedish governmental institute engaged in building the first Swedish computer, BISC, Binary Electronic Sequence Calculator. A BISC, being in Swedish, a bitter. So it, it's a little joke about that. It was uh, commissioned in 1953, and for some weeks it was the fastest computer in the world. Wow! Hey, yes, I. Uh, Bury realized that when developing admin administrative systems, you can't start just programming. You have to do a lot of things before. You have to ask yourself, which information do we need in this system? And of course, how should it be proceeded? And proceeded means what are the structure of information? What are dependencies between different information sets? What are the meaning of information? Very important. And when should it be processed? This realization that time matters, Boyer, I think, was the first in the world realizing that, and he still is one of the few. And after that, we can start programming the system. Programming is to take all SIF software engineering. The other questions was called systems development, all using Boyer's word infology and data logic. Uh, one of his famous contributions is the infological equation, saying simply that the information, and Boye did not distinguish between information and knowledge. He was in fact my first supervisor, and we always argued about that, because I saw a clear difference, but, but Boye, Boye did not do that. He said, information or knowledge is a function of the data, the pre-knowledge, called S here, and the time the interpretation is, is done. Uh, S is a critical part. Uh, this is his last uh, interpretation where S is pre-knowledge. The first version, S, was structure, and then S was named semantics, meaning, and now 
it encompasses almost the result of the total life experience of the user. So this is uh, this is great, I should say. Over the years, a lot of research was done within systems development, uh, especially uh, several approaches was developed in Scandinavia. And Jürgen Banzler, a Danish uh, scholar, uh, described this as four different approaches. He has approach based upon control, that was the ordinary system theoretical approach, traditional systems development, based upon systems life cycle. The harmony approach, well, that's a social technical approach based upon user participation and participatory design. Then he identified a conflict approach or the collective approach based upon democracy, based upon control of trade union in combination with some sort of participatory design. And then he identified a fourth approach which is not very well known the radical approach based upon individual human scale information systems used by the clocks. And I will say a lot more about that later on. Uh, Johan Ivar and Kalle Lüttinen have also a similar description. Four approaches, but the radical approach uh, was is not described here. Uh, instead, they have identified the object orientation uh, launched first by Christian Nygaard in his Simula, the first object-oriented language, which was over the years developed to an object-oriented approach, which ended up in RUP by Eva Jakobsen. Uh, the systems approach, that's what Langefoss said, the infological approaches, traditional system development models, ending up via prototyping in Scrum, which I think today is the most common systems development way. Then we have the social technique, uh, here uh, identified by Mumford, and the first scholars within this area, Olfeyer, Linsberg Andersen, Bo Hedberg, coming more from organizational theory than information systems. Uh, the second generation, myself, St. Fries, St. Carlson, all from Lund, uh, coming from information systems and trying to adopt the systems to the work, ending up in prototyping and participative design. The collective approach was introduced by the trade unions, has manifested in a lot of projects and a lot of case studies and a lot of papers and theoretically it ended in activity theory. You see there are some cross swords, meaning there are conflicts about this. Uh, the social technique put much more focus on work than the systems approach. Collective approach puts much more emphasis on power for the trade unions than the social technique did. Um, and the arrows indicates development. An interesting thing is that, that they all end up in prototyping, going to Scrum. And also an interesting fact is this. Case to the God and case to the God approach at the different extremes in this scale. So that was also a great man. Something about the socio-technical approach. It started in Tavistock. When I was in London, I went to Covent Garden and suddenly I saw, oh, this sign, Tavistock, I must have taken a picture. Um, so <laughs> I have to put that picture here, of course. And Tavistock was the beginning, uh, meaning the end of World War II, a therapeutic establishment 
dealing with individual development, mental health in organizations. The main concern was curing sick information. The main idea was autonomous work groups. Uh, and I started with studying the English coal mines where the work was extremely specialized. Every person was responsible for single task only according to Taylor's scientific management. So the Tavistock research team realized that technical optimization at the expense of the human system led to suboptimal performance for the whole system. So they introduced the general idea of autonomous work group where the workers could decide a lot within certain frames. That idea was introduced by several researchers in Tavistock, Bayard, Kurt Levin, uh, Ludwig von Batalante was also involved there. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and it evolved into the classical model, it's a typical USA model, saying, yes, we shall do this. We assign social goals, technical goals. We say which are also possible. We compare, we rank, and then we select. Simple, very simple. So let's continue. Uh, Ine Manford. I met her for the first time in Pisa, 1979. And the picture was what I took at that time. And she was a pioneer in many ways. She was the first woman working underground in the coal mines as a, a market or something like that. Uh, I was impressed by her performance in Pisa and immediately invited her to Lund. And she came to Lund and talked and we, we loved her. So she made a deep impression and several of us immediately became uh, social te technicians. Um, and she had also made a great impression on other countries and other persons in Sweden. So I'm proud of and happy about being part of this movement. Uh, <coughs> however, there were mistrust between the trade unions and Tavistock in UK. So Tavistock couldn't continue. But then in Norway, in the beginning of the 60s, they started an industrial democracy project. And they asked Tavistock for help. And yes, said Tavistock, we will for sure help. So he heard Trist, Fred Emery, Aina Torsrud, began this participation project in autumn 1962. Uh, but in the same way as in England, mistrust between trade unions and the socio-technical researchers came up. Uh, and that's because of what we call the conflict view and the harmony view. The socio-technical approach assumed that management and workers in the group actually had the same goals, the same basic goals, and therefore they could come to an agreement. But the collective approach said, no, absolutely not. Trade unions and management, they are always in conflict. They can never, never, ever agree. So all decisions have to be negotiated. Uh, I have problems seeing the difference between this negotiation and coming to agreement. But uh, there was obviously a great difference according to the trade unions. Uh, 1970, Kongsberg's work for Fabrik should introduce a new production planning system, Kova uh, The trade owners realized the working conditions of the employees would deteriorate heavily. And I also realized 
They knew nothing about systems development. They know nothing about how to negotiate in these strategic issues. So they asked some researchers for help. And yes, Kristen Igor, who I'm telling about you, said, we will for sure help you. So they started in 1970, the first project in Scandinavia, maybe also in the world, where trade unions and researchers collaborated. And soon similar project followed in Sweden, uh, Demos, uh, Duve, Utopia, you name them, uh, described in, in these papers, books. Uh, in Sweden, Oke Sandberg suggested a trade union systems development approach. Oh, that was long. Basically, two parallel investigations, like this. To the left, to the right, we have the project uh, group, blue, of course. Uh, the ordinary traditional systems development. In the middle, in with red, we have the trade union investigation. And uh, the commission group, that's the whole assembly, union board are the one who do the job, do you know, the negotiations between the management. You see the cross swords here. And they have external resources, such as researchers and, and others, to their support. And this investigation should be paid by the management. And on the left side, we have the workmates and the union meeting, where the members of the trade union have possibility to express their meaning. But they have no, absolutely no access to the project group developing the traditional system. All this information must go via the trade union. So they replaced one expert group, the project group, with another expert group. Uh, <coughs> okay, I could say much more about that. Uh, all this resulted in the next 20 years in a lot of similar projects and a huge amount of publications. I have a few of them here and uh, it's fairly well described as well as the social technical approach. So um, I leave that and instead I will talk about the radical approach. And it started with this guy, Bach Gonurmenen. Uh, when I was writing the paper for this conference, my wife came and asked me, what are you doing? Oh, I'm writing a conference paper, I said. But from a system developer's point of view, I was not doing that. I was using Word. Tomorrow I think I will go shopping. But the system developer don't think that. He or she think I'm going to use the card. So as soon as I'm called user, I'm an appendix to the system. I'm an operator of a computer. And it is the computer that is important. But from my own point of view, I'm working. And I use many tools. I use Word, I use Excel, I use Keynote, as in this case. I use a microphone here to talk in and have a web camera looking at. So there are lots of tools involved, but I'm doing work. I'm working. I am now presenting my paper. I'm not using any damn computer, from my point of view. Uh, Mark introduced this to me, 1981 already, when we met for the first time at an Irish conference in Oulu. And in fact, we were roommates. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, all these approaches uh, consider that the system is an actor. Since I'm using the system, 
the system is doing the job. But I have lots of work, knowledge, skill that is not put into the system, that is not possible to put into the system because it's unknown to me. It's tacit knowledge. Um, and the first one who introduced this, Pollyanne in 1968, said tacit knowledge cannot be expressed. Uh, Dono Kantakuchi said uh, 30 years later almost that, well, it can. And principally, I talked about the same thing. Tacit knowledge can be transmitted in, in some sort of apprentice way in a social interaction. Uh, so uh, that was a lot of discussion about that. Uh, the, all of these approaches saying that the system is an actor demand that this tacit of knowledge is put into the computer. And that's not possible. So that's one of the explanations that so many systems fail. So Marco Newman we introduced uh, in the end of the 80s a humanistic system, individual system for each user supporting him or her in the job. And this system could be connected in a network, not programmed by some uh, Damn systems developers, but enabled by mutual agreements and decisions of those who are working with them. So, technically, it put very high demand on should be easy to use and adopt to the working style of the users. Uh, actually, it means user concept should be damned. We shall talk about clerks, about workers etc. and not about those users. And looking at the modern clock, he or she performs a lot of tasks, some formalized, some not formalized, some demand huge efforts, some almost none. And this clock has a different, lot of different systems for support. As I have told you now, I'm using a lot of, of uh, systems here. Um, and the information is moved between these systems uh, and sometimes it's being processed in between um, much together collected using some calculations uh, very often excel is involved in these areas and it means that the clocks must know the system understand the system and above all work around their limitations so if you look how systems are used and compare them to how they were thought to be used. There are often very huge differences. Uh, an interesting thing is, is that over the time we learn the system so well that we forgot what we have learned and just do it. The knowledge is transformed into the fingers. So when my wife asked me for some help, help with Word or some other programs, I can't tell her. I have to show her because my knowledge is in my fingers. So that's one word called class, tacit knowledge. Uh, <coughs> uh, looking at this, Excel was a major breakthrough. It provided a clock with function that the clock needed but was not available before. So with Excel, the clocks could do a lot of work they could not do before. In fact, seen from a conceptual point of view, Excel, an Excel sheet describes the work of a clock or a part of the work of the clock. And when it is executed, the work is performed. So the question comes up now, ah, this is one tool. Do we have other such tools 
we have missed, we have not realized because we see the computer as a computer and not as a tool. For instance, data management or information management, I should say. Yeah, databases, you say. No, no, for God's sake, no. Database tools are made by database experts to fit their needs. They are totally different from the needs of the clock. These needs are so far mainly tacit. So we are still waiting for that killer application. And in the meantime, let's take some rest and look at some nice pictures. Thanks for me. Bye bye.